Marlene 3D History. M2W Productions LLC. Elizabeth Keckley, 1818 through 1907, seamstress. Elizabeth Keckley. Keckley became part of the westward expansion movement through the 1840s and 1850s. Hugh Garland moved his family and 17 slaves to St. Louis, including Keckley and her mother Agnes Hobbs, to St. Louis, Missouri, a city on the Mississippi River, in search for a better living. Mary Todd Lincoln. Elizabeth Keckley was the seamstress and confidant of Mary Todd Lincoln, wife of President Abraham Lincoln. I'll get to heaven by Images of St. Louis, music that can be heard during the 1800s. But you cannot harm their soul. By and by, Lord, by and by, we'll all get to heaven. Washington, D.C. Elizabeth Keckley is in her shop dressed in an 1860s gray taffeta dress with pink satin. The shop is crowded with projects and dress forms. Keckley is busy working on a couple projects. Let's listen in on Keckley's story. Oh, I'm almost finished with this. Uh, it's a, a little gown for my friend's christening gown I have here on the farm. I have to hem it. I got it pinned, and I have um, finished the um, seams inside. I have a button to put on, and it will be ready to go. So that's good. I'm finished with that. Well, the committee will be coming soon. Uh, to hear about why I wrote a book for uh, Mary Todd uh, Lincoln and also about my life as a young slave girl. I will pin this to this form and it's going to be just off of the shoulder for one of my clients. I have to do a tuck and and fit it or pin it to form and let the let my client be able to see how it would look on. And so as I make my tucks and do my pinning, I will be ready when she comes to my shop. I normally don't like, <laughs> I wish they would let me come. Okay, do I want the tuck to go this way towards the, the front or backwards? Oh, yes, that's perfect. That's just, ah, oh. well. The reason I do the tux and fit it to form is so that it will have a perfect fit. And then I would bring up the bodice and I want this particular dress to be off the shoulders just a bit. And I'll pin that in place. I believe will fit perfectly. I like the French way of of um, uh, decorating uh, the bodice for women. It's not too exact, exaggerant, exaggerant, but it is just beautiful. So. Now, this is almost ready for her to get an idea of what it looked like. 
Well, you've come. <laughs> uh, I have been working all morning long trying to um, get this bodice together for one of my clients. And if you just bear with me a minute, I'll finish pinning it to form. Oh, it's just going to be beautiful. I understand that you want to know and tell me that why my writing of the book has met with such controversy. Well, that's beautiful, don't you think? When I was a slave, I was only a child, when I started learning how to sew. Being a seamstress, and later on I became a dressmaker, there is a difference. One, uh, you, are, you make more plain and common clothing, and the other, you, your work is fine. It's like that of a tailor. And so I went to live with Miss Ann and Hugh Garland. And Hugh, his business endeavors did not uh, work out. And so he decided he would sell everything and move to St. Louis. And my mother and I went with Ann and Hugh to St. Louis and there he didn't do much better. He uh, couldn't bring any money in to take care of his family. So I started going out and taking sewing in. My stitches were excellent. I, I made nine stitches per inch. Oh, it wasn't long before the ladies in St. Louis, they loved my work. And the patrons and clients grew and grew and grew. I decided I would ask Master Garland if I could buy my own freedom. Finally, Master Garland told me that he would allow me to buy myself and it would cost me $1,200 to buy me and my son, George Hobbs Kirkland. One day, there was one of my patrons that came and she says, uh, uh, Elizabeth, Miss uh, LaBorge, she says, Elizabeth, I understand you want to go to New York to raise money so that you can uh, buy your freedoms. She says, uh, you do not have to go to New York to do what we here, your friends in St. Louis, could do for you. You don't have to do that. I've been given $200 for my birthday, and my, my mom, she has $100. And I'm sure that we could raise the rest. And so Miss LaVar, she went and she started uh, talking to the ladies of St. Louis. And it wasn't long, the money was raised. In 1855, when the money was raised, Master Burrell came out of Mississippi and he allowed me to buy my freedom. I went to see my mother's uh, remains in 1857 down in Vicksburg, Mississippi. But when they told me they didn't put a marker on my mother's grave, I didn't want to see it. Well, I paid everything off and by 1860, I got in a carriage and I went to Baltimore. And I stayed six months in Baltimore. I started a school for girls and I taught them how to fit and pin uh, to the dress forms. I taught them how to cut. I taught them uh, 
how to change a bodice around. Yes. I thought that I could make a living by training the girls how to sew. It wasn't working out. And so I didn't have much money left, so I took what little money I had left and went to Washington. Miss Lincoln, in late 1861, came into town, and she was from the state of Illinois. Miss Lincoln, she was getting ready for the levy for the inaugural ball, and she wanted someone to make her a bodice. And so Ms. Ringo told me if I would go down to the hotel that I might be able to get the job. Yes, and Monday I went in and I was the last to be interviewed. Ms. Lincoln, she interviewed me and said that uh, you worked in St. Louis, didn't you? And she knew some of the patriots that I'd had there. And my name had went before me. And one of my first patrons in Washington, D.C. was Verna Davis. And Verna Davis, she had me to uh, uh, make her dresses. And I, I, I fitted the bodice and got her form exactly like I thought it would look good on her. And I made the dresses, and, and she loved my dresses. And then I started getting more patrons like Miss Ringo and Miss Lee and Miss um, Wells. They were all my clients. And she said, well, since you work for, for Mrs. Uh, Laborge and others, she says, um, you can have all of my work if, if you would negotiate your prices. Now, I'm a free woman and I'm interviewing for a job, but I have to uh, negotiate my prices. If my prices are reasonable enough. I thought, well, they would be reasonable enough. And I would use that contact with the First Lady of the United States. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Did you hear that? Did you hear it?